Welcome to the Ages of Rock podcast with your hosts, Bill Algie, Dennis Talbot, and Alan Tate. We are three guys who have one thing in common, a love of rock and roll. Our goal is to talk about all things rock. We hope you find this show intriguing, funny, and occasionally highly opinionated. Enjoy. Still love it loud? So do we. Rock and Pod returns to Nashville on Saturday, August 25th. Over 25 rock podcasts from all over North America recording on site. Vinyl and memorabilia dealers selling the best in rock merchandise. And awesome rock musicians and personalities participating in signing sessions and on stage panel discussions throughout the day. Special guests include current and former members of Korn, Kiss, Angel, Winger, Loudness, Except, Bang Day. Kick Tracy, as well as producers that have worked with Slayer, Ozzy, Alice Cooper, Seven Dust, and many more. More guests being added weekly. Don't miss your chance to be part of an awesome celebration of all things rock. Rock and Pod takes place at the legendary Nashville Palace, August 25th, 2018. More details available at rockandpod.com. That's R O C K N P O D.com. The Nashville Rock and Pod Expo. Brought to you by Blind Tiger Record Club. School of Rock Nashville and School of Rock Franklin, a DBG Productions event. Welcome back to the Age of Rock podcast. It's Bill, Dennis, and Alan. And uh, one of us looks a little like they're not in their normal place, which is probably not a bad thing. Anyway, this episode is uh, going to air on the uh, 18th, July 18th, 2018. And we have a special guest later, and it is... Uh, Ron Keel, the Metal Cowboy. So that is going to be a great interview, trust me. We had a great time with Ron. He took us to some very private places, which was kind of cool. We got to hear some neat stuff, so stick around. All right, so uh, before we get to there, where the hell is Dennis? I'm in Vegas. Oh. I just got my balls busted at an Indian casino down the road. <laughs> I said, it's funny, we watched... Um, uh, oh, uh, Vegas vacation. And you know how that whole thing, he's he's dealing with that one dealer at that blackjack table. Well, Max wanted to play blackjack. So we, we went out to the desert today. We went to Red Rock Canyon. Yeah. And then down to a place called Good Springs. We ate at this uh, real old saloon. It's been on one of the paranormal things. It's like hundred and it was from 1913 was when this place opened. Great burgers, man. If you ever get a chance, they ain't shit in that town except for that for that bar. So we ate there, and then we went down to another town called Prim. The only reason we went down to these these places was Max used to play Fallout Vegas on his video game, and all these towns are on this on this video game. So he knew all the towns, and then actually made them pretty close to the things of what they are. That saloon was there, and then the thing. So we went down there. To this, there's this casino down there, uh, Buffalo Bills. It's got this big roller coaster that runs oh, around the yeah. thing. You know, it wasn't running. We drove all the way down for that. It was only 20 miles away. So Max was like, I want to play some blackjack. So he <laughs> found one blackjack table open. It was, you know, it was noon. There wasn't a whole lot of people down there. And this woman just absolutely cleaned my clock. I mean, I, <laughs> I could not get nothing. I mean, she cleaned me out 40 bucks so quick. It, it was ridiculous. $5 a pop. Max sit and played for a little bit longer. And he, she finally cleaned his clock, too. And uh, but I did go down to the roulette table and bet on red and black and got uh, 35 of my 40 back. So I, I was only down uh, five bucks. So that wasn't too bad. That's say, hey, you win, you win in yeah. Vegas. You can, if you right. want, if you can leave there <laughs> down five bucks, you win. Yeah, I went to Vegas but, like four years ago, and I spent a whopping five dollars in a <laughs> <laughs> one of the poker machines, and that was it. Yeah, I'm down. I'm like I said, I'm more of sightseeing. We went to. We went in town last night. We got in late or later in the afternoon, so we went down to the uh, uh, Treasure Island. My mother-in-law's with us, and she's like, yeah. you know, Max wants to see this, you know, the, the, the pirate ship fight. Well, they stopped doing that two years ago. We didn't <laughs> yeah, know that. You should have said something. So, I told you, don't bother. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we waited around. The show was supposed to start at 10. It's like, it didn't start. And I asked the guy at that C- Senior Frogs, and he's like, dude, they ain't did that for two years. Yeah. So we went over to the uh, Venetian, walked around there for a little bit, and down to as far as, um, I don't know, where did we go down? But anyway, went down a little bit and then come back. It was, the town was just packed, and we were tired from traveling all day we did get in the car and drive up to uh is it fremont street just yeah. to see where it was at and it was it kind of sucked because i was i kind of wanted to go but everybody was kind of tired and as we went by the 
the main road that cuts across there. I guess that the, right there is a stage. I guess there was a live band playing, and they were. A, I don't know if it was a Van Halen tribute, but they were doing "Running with the Devil," and I'm like, "Damn, I like." This. <laughs> they have Wilson a lot of. You need to look at that. Look at the Fremont Experience online because they have okay. concerts there all the time, and usually that's it's named people. Right. It's we're not. actually going down again tonight. We're going to go to the. Uh, we're going to MGM tonight to see Ka, one of the Circle oh, okay. shows. Cool. Yeah. And then after that's over with, we're going to go from there to F- Fremont Street. We're going to go to dinner tonight and then hang around. Go over, go a... over to, go over to the uh, New York, New York across the street, and go to the dueling piano bar in there. That's cool. Yeah, we'll do that too. We're, we're, we, we got a oh, lot of stuff we, we want to see. We just talk about that. And, yeah. <laughs> so you need to go to. Are you going to go to Vamped? You need to go to Vamped, man. That's the that's the I bar where they too. have. I want to go. That's off the beaten path. If you have a car, that'd be the place to go. I've got a car. And, yep. um, so and, and uh, yeah. check out Rating the Rock Vault. Yeah. At the Hard Rock. Wish... You can get cheap tickets for that, man. Go get some cheap tickets and go. It's fun. Yeah, I might. We're pretty well booked this week. We've got about every minute of our days or it's got something going on. So it's I don't lazy, know. Man. You got to be lazy. I know. And we, we got a whole day. We're going to go to Grand Canyon and Hoover Dam. That's, you know, that's a, that's a whole day in itself. Cool. So. Any rock news? We lost him. He just froze up. It's frozen. He has never looked better in his life. Oh, wow. Oh, frozen. Man, he's he's all froze. <laughs> you were frozen. Now he's up back. There he is. <laughs> he's back. He's danglers dangling. But no, I, I haven't really heard anything this week. Uh, not nothing really going on. I've been more in Vegas. I'm in vacation mode right now. So <laughs> cool. Good for you. Yeah. But, uh, I have no rock news. The only thing I really have to say is don't forget that if you want to check this episode out again, check us out on Saturdays and Wednesdays on KGFRocks.com. Cool. Exactly. All right. I went to two shows this week. Um, Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. On, uh, well, last week, I guess it was. Wednesday, I went to see um, Styx. Uh, It was Styx, Joan Jett, and um, Tesla. Good show. Yeah. Lisa is a big fan of Dennis DeYoung, so every time it was a Dennis DeYoung solo <laughs> song, you can see her with her fingers in her ears, saying they're looking like she was in severe pain. Um, she did tell me that Lady is her favorite song, and if he would have sang that song, she would have left. You tell, tell Lisa <laughs> that I have more respect for her now, because Lady is my number two all-time favorite song. Yeah, she and was, I just she was actually just listened to that on my phone today. She was not having any of it. So um, it was a good show, though. Um, I want to thank our buddy Tim Rosner for uh, hooking me up. And um, we had actually the best seats I've ever had at that venue. And we've set up really close before. And in the back, we had four rows behind the soundboard. And the sound was really, really good. And the visual was good. I thought Sticks did a, uh, put on a pretty good show. So um, I, thought they, I thought it was all went really well. Joan Jett actually was much better this time than when we saw really? him, when we saw him with Heart and Cheap Trick. She was much better. She played, um, I don't know how many, 12 songs, one song right after back, back to back to back. Um, but they were, it was pretty enjoyable, much better than last time. And well, you know, I, I think band. that when we saw Joan Jett and Hart at Riverbend, I think that there was just something wrong the whole time because none of it was an enjoyable experience, I don't think. Yeah, I know. I didn't like, I didn't like, yeah, our wives being there either. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, yeah. I, it was hot, and where we were sitting was kind of funky. It was never uncomfortable, and the sound wasn't the best. Yeah. It, you said it wasn't a it wasn't a pleasurable evening. It wasn't, it right. wasn't the greatest experience. Well, I've the ever best part of that evening was the carrot cake at the restaurant before the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, but um, anyway, Friday night. Yeah, Friday night we went to um, we went to see Foreigner and White Snake and um, Jason, Jason Bond. I'm telling you, I read. Yesterday, I think it was that um, Jimmy Page, John Paul Jones, and um, Robert Plant are discussing a 50th anniversary tour. And, I saw something. Uh, that would be awesome. And they got it. I mean, I don't. They haven't talked about a drummer, but it's got to be Jason Bonham. I'm telling you. Oh, yeah, it will I, be. You well, know, you know when you go to those shows that start at seven, there's nobody ever in the stands for the seven o'clock band. You know, there's there's the stands are quarter full at the most, packed. And wow. Everybody standing up and cheering and screaming, and it was cool. Um, they that's a he's got a great band, Jason Bond's got a great band. Um, 
White Snake was really good. Eh, the sound was a little muffly, couldn't hear very well. And Foreigner was really good. I just had heard, and that's the third show that was exactly the same show um, <laughs> as what I saw last year. I'm like, okay. But um, I did get to meet Jeff Pilson. Um, actually, I got to meet the whole band. Um, it was a Jeff hooked me up with a meet and greet, got to shake hands, and then took a picture with the band and left. It was five minutes max. Yeah. And, um, did you get your picture or did they put it online? I guess that's supposed point to be online. Or... I haven't seen it yet. I keep looking for yeah. it and I haven't posted it on a page when you get it on. I oh, want to see it. Trust me. I will. I'm just trying to see if yeah. it's ever going to come through. Let's see if it comes yeah. through. You guys keep, t- keep jabbering. You got anything else? If not, um, let's be done with it. Well, I think we probably need to be done with it. All right. Let's just be done with it. Then if you want to be that All way. Right. All, All right. right. <laughs> so Friday, oh, and we, yeah, and... so suddenly everybody wants to say something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Dennis. No, we will be taking a little uh, vacation uh, here. Yeah. Well, Whatever. Yeah. We're going to miss a week here coming up. Yeah, we're going to be off a week. Okay. So, so, last Friday, our next guest does a live radio show. And last Friday, <laughs> I was on. I was listening to the show from work, working really hard. And he said, hey, call this number, 1-800 and blah, blah, blah. And I can't remember what it is right now. And... Um, I, so he's, you can send an email for Twitter, you can whatever. So I'm sitting there and I call the number, phone rings and rings and rings and rings. And he picks up and goes, hey, it's Ron Keel, what's going on? I'm like, what? <laughs> 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 so we chatted a little bit on his live K Rocks, uh, or, I'm sorry, KBack.com radio show, which was great. Um, had a good time. And um, he played a little white snake for me because I requested some white snake for the show that night. And um, it was awesome. So we had a good time. And um here you go, Ron Keel, the heavy metal cowboy. Hey, Ron, I see you're in the studio. What are you working on? I am in the studio here in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, recording the new Ron Keel band album. The album is called Fight Like a Band, coming out on EMP Outlaw Records. David Ellison from Megadeth has signed us to a great deal with his EMP label group. And we're just wrapping up the sessions now. Lead guitar is going on today, and uh, we're literally couple of days away from completion on this project which is certainly a labor of love and and you know you always feel like your newest album or your your latest work is your best work uh, i try and at this stage of the game i try and find at least one song or more on every album that is one of the best songs i've ever written and i think this album has uh, several of those that qualify so uh you know my best album who knows? That's for the audience and the listeners to judge. I know that many people still uh, love and favor that the Steeler album from 1983, The Right to Rock, The Final Frontier, big parts of, of our youth and, and growing up listening to those records for the first time. But uh, the, the machine has to keep grinding out tunes. And I'm really happy to be in the studio with uh, my favorite band at this stage of the game. Cool. Do when was ha- the last do record? A, do you have a release date on that album yet? Or are you just... Wait until you get it done. The release date was scheduled for August 31st, and we are behind schedule and over budget, of course. I'm hoping that we can still make that deadline, but uh, I'm not going to rush it. If we have to hold off until January, then uh, so be it. I like releasing albums early in the year anyway, because uh, most of my successful albums, Final Frontier, Right to Rock, were released in January or early in the year, and you got the whole year to work it. Uh, but uh, we had hoped to have this one out already. It's just been a long process. The creative process, uh, just uh, it doesn't, uh, there, you can't put a deadline on that. And it's the first album that I've written and recorded in four years. So uh, I wanted to make sure that it's something that could live up to my standards. I think I've set the bar pretty high with uh, the last album I did, Metal Cowboy, which was a huge critical success and re-released this year by EMP Records as Metal Cowboy Reloaded, remixed, remastered, bonus tracks and such. So uh, that, to me, set the bar pretty high, and I want to make sure that this record lives up to that standard. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. Bill, go ahead. You were, you well, were I asked, to say something. I, I had a question. <laughs> he, he answered that, which was, when was the last <laughs> record? And I thought it was like, and I knew it was, I thought it was in 2014. I was going to comment that I had seen that it had been re-released. So that's really, that's, that's pretty cool. Very cool and stuff. Lap- the last Keel album uh, was 2010 on Frontiers Records, uh, Streets of Rock and Roll, which is a great record uh, that a lot of people, and I know Frontiers did some promotion on that record, and uh, it's, in my opinion, the best Keel album ever, 
but a lot of people don't know it exists. I'll post a song on my social media from that album and people will think, oh, wow, New Keel. And they have no idea that that record came out in 2010, but uh, highly recommended Streets of Rock and Roll from Keel in 2010. And that, that would be a tough one to, to top if we were to ever do another Keel album. I'm certainly very proud of that release as well. So hopefully it won't take four years to get the next album out. I have seven albums on the, uh, the timetable right now, two new ones wow. and five reissues. Uh, of course, uh, Rock Candy Records, great label from uh, the UK, is re-releasing the Keel, Final Frontier, and self-titled albums, the MCA year, so to speak. And uh, they're re-releasing those, remastered, re-issued re, uh, on CD, finally, after decades of fans uh, wanting those records in their hands. We're glad to see that coming back out. Of course, the Metal Cowboy Reloaded, the uh, Ron Keel Band, Fight Like a Band album, which is my top priority right now. And also in a, a Black Sabbath tribute called Emerald Sabbath, which is uh, Black Sabbath alumni, friends of uh, people that were in the band and people on the, like Rudy Sarzo played bass, Vinnie Apathy on drums. Uh, and I was uh, really, really proud to be invited to participate in that release. I have three lead vocals on that tribute album, uh, an Aussie song, Hole in the Sky, a uh, Ian Gillen song, Trashed, and a Ronnie James Dio song, uh, which uh, uh, what is the Ronnie James Dio song? Come on, uh, I cut it right here. I cut the vocal right here where we, where we speak. Uh, <laughs> See, Bill, not die, just young. Me. die young, die young, die yeah, young. Yeah, yeah. uh, oh, cool. well, really, really super proud of that. And I said I'll do the uh, I'll do the Aussie track and the Gillen track uh, for a session fee, but I'll do the Ronnie James Dio track for free because it was a huge <laughs> honor to uh, to play with Vinnie Apathy and Rudy Sarzo on bass and D.C. Cawthorn from my band on lead guitar on that track. So looking forward to that Emerald Sabbath, Black Sabbath tribute album coming out very soon. Cool. So how did you get the, uh, how did you get the name for the new album? Fight Like a Band. What, what, <clears throat> where'd that come from? Uh, my band has been with me at my side for, for four years now. These guys that, I, that are, I'm playing with and We've gone through hell and back. I mean, we all came here to Sioux Falls, South Dakota for a huge business opportunity. There was uh, an entertainment complex called Badlands Pond. Uh, concert venue, radio station, TV show, uh, literally a, a huge entertainment endeavor that really brought us all to Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And we had we were living the dream, literally, for you know, the first year. Major, big tour bus, road crew, Big money, huge arenas, and really living the dream all over again at this stage of the game in my career. It was a fantastic year. However, that business went south uh, about a year and a half ago, and me and the guys in the band decided we're gonna we're gonna stick it out. We're gonna we're gonna continue to fight through this. We we have a great band, a great group of guys that really have uh, been my support group and a great team. Uh, when my wife was diagnosed with breast cancer, shortly after the business closed, all of a sudden, okay, I'm, I'm out of work. Uh, the radio gig was over. The band, they pulled the plug on the band. My wife's got cancer. About a million dollars later, after uh, the, the dust settled and the damage was done, these guys were still at my side, uh, fighting, rehearsing, working hard, creating, going on stage all over the country and kicking ass. And... Uh, that phrase, fight like a band, just kind of struck me uh, as something that is, is it's what we've done. Uh, the first verse of the song it deals with my wife's bout with breast cancer. And the first verse and chorus is fight like a girl. If you're going to take on the world, fight like a girl. <laughs> uh, and then it goes into my biographical lyric about the days on the Sunset Strip when we had nothing to eat. and we We're fighting to survive, and uh, trying to make it in the business. And we're still here. We're still fighting. We're still rocking. We're still uh, doing what we love to do. And that uh, that phrase just gravitated to me. And I wrote a song around that. And it is the title track to the new album. Uh, some uh, some great autobiographical songs on this record. And at this stage of the game, I uh, I do write a lot of songs about personal experience, things I've been through, things that uh, have touched me in my life whether it be uh, just the attitude to keep fighting, to keep uh, doing what you're doing, songs about life and love and uh, the real world. But there's also some great story songs on this album as well, where I'm telling stories about characters, uh, 
There's a song called Hearts Gone Wild. It's a tragic love story that uh, this man and this woman, they meet, they sing, they play, they die. I, ah, I didn't say that. I can't give away the ending. Uh, but it's, it's a tragic love story. And then I have a great song on the record. We're doing the solo right now as, as we speak in the next room. Uh, DC is doing the solo for uh, a song called Rock and Roll Guitar, which is the story of a guitar that passes from one musician's hands to the next. One guy... He's broken. He pawns the guitar, and then this kid comes in and buys the guitar. He takes it home. He learns how to write songs. He becomes a big star, and then he passes the guitar on to the next generation. So it's a story song about a rock and roll guitar. So there are stories about me and my life and, and my experiences, and also some 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 great yarns to spin, all built around the same thing that I've always done: big, huge anthem choruses, uh, lyrics that mean something. Uh, strong guitar riffs and thunderous drums and uh, great grooves. So I'm sure that uh, fans of Ron Keel and Metal Cowboy especially are going to love the new Ron Keel band album, Fight Like a Band, coming soon from EMP Outlaw Records. So is the Ron Keel band going to tour behind that album? And if so, do you have any plans to maybe release a live album? We have, uh, we've been on the road pretty much nonstop the last few years. We go where they send us. You take the best opportunity. If it makes sense, then you go. If you, if you can afford to, uh, to get the bus and the crew and the gear and the band to the next town, then you go and, and you do what you got to do. I would love to play more and more often. Uh, and uh, touring, so to speak, these days, it's a weekend warrior thing. You're out Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And uh, whether it's uh, with the full band or as a solo acoustic artist, I do a lot of those gigs as well. I just got back from uh, Wyoming, Montana, Utah last weekend on the road with just me and my guitar, basically playing these small towns where nobody knows who the hell I am and telling my stories, singing my songs. And I've got uh, the Nashville Rock and Pod Expo, which I know you guys are going to be at, right? Absolutely. Yeah, fantastic event. August 25 and 26 in Nashville, Tennessee. And that's a gig that I would love to bring the whole band, but I'm bringing my guitar, my stories, my uh merchandise and i'm gonna i'm gonna really enjoy this event the uh rocket pod expo great lineup as you guys know uh, we've got uh, mitch malloy frank Domino, and punky meadows from angel uh tora tora lots more guys michael wagner multi-platinum producer good friend of mine who produced the self-titled 1987 keel album will be there michael and i will be doing a panel discussion together at the expo and uh just great to be a part of that event go back to nashville for the first time and Four years, as, as you may know, Nashville is one of my hometowns. And uh, to get to go back there and do it at an event like this with me, my guitar, my songs, my stories, uh, it's going to be a great time. I can't wait to see you guys there. That will be it's deja be a vu blast. for me. What's that now? I said that'll be deja vu for me oh, with yeah. uh, the old Evansville Kiss Expo. <laughs> That's right, man. That, uh, that was I, a I long appreciate... time ago. It was. I it was, was actually uh, there. I, I went uh, there. <laughs> I didn't know I went uh, Certainly, thank you for bringing me to that. That uh, there's still a, a YouTube video of me doing "Hard Luck Woman," which has got, gosh, what twenty five, thirty thousand hits on YouTube of you know me who singing posted uh, that video. "Hard Luck Woman." Uh, that was probably you, right? <laughs> it was me. I posted uh, it, that one and uh, uh, shoot, uh, "Because the Night." Those were my two favorites cool, of the day. Well, yeah. I, I, and I, I also have a DVD for years, you. Years, man. I have a DVD of that whole show for you. I'll try to remember to bring it oh, to Nashville. Oh, cool. Thank you, man. Thank you. Well, I appreciate your support through the years and, and for bringing me to places like Evansville. And, and uh, uh, I can't thank you enough for your support and for having me on the podcast today. You know something, though, Ron? I, you know, I met you actually at that. I didn't know Alan at the time, but I was at the Evansville Expo and, and met you that day and talked to you that day and, and messed around. Then saw you again here recently at the at in, 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 in Atlanta at that Vinnie Vincent uh, That's right. Kiss yeah. Kit and saw you do your thing there and everything. One thing about you and I, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna give you all kinds of accolades. I appreciate you are, it. You are one of the most sincerest persons I have ever met as far as fan interaction and doing things with. I like music. It is music. Sorry, they're, they're, <laughs> they're tracking guitars in the next room. Oh, that's I, cool. Yeah, we're getting, it, we're getting to hear first. Getting record. Yeah, you're getting to hear it first here on the podcast. That's exactly. a great song right there. That's the Hearts Gone Wild song. Now they're, they're making good progress in there. 
They exactly. should have the album done by the time we're finished with this interview. But I appreciate awesome. those accolades. But no, like I you said, know, though, I've seen you and I've seen you in action over a twenty-year period at different times. And like I said, you are one of those people that are sincerely honest, good with their fans. I mean, you'll. It, it seems like you do everything you can out of your way to to make a fan happy. And there's well, there's a not a lot of those around anymore. You know. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> that. And that comes from two places. One is the the heart. And uh, the soul that I believe that we, we've got to be people first. Uh, I'm a musician second. I'm a human being first. I'm a man. And my, uh, how I carry myself and how I act uh, and how I treat other people is uh, the most important thing. Second of all, it's just good business, man. I'm telling you, throughout the course of, what, 35 years now as a recording artist, you're going to lose a lot of fans. You're going you're gonna to gain a lot of fans. I mean... Uh, people that bought the Sealer record may may not be buying my next album. You're in a constant battle to win these people over. Everybody that likes you uh, is another notch in your barrel, and it's it's not just business. I do enjoy it. I do enjoy that interaction with the fans and uh, just being me and and that that freedom that I didn't have back in the day. You know, back in the day in the '80s when I was selling a lot of records in my heyday, it was fashionable to be a quote rock star. It was, it was not cool to be the guy next door, man. You had to be larger than life and outrageous and you had to be on heroin and you had to wreck cars and you had to do stuff that just, that wasn't me, man. You know, I was always the guy next door. I was always trying to be, uh, you know, do the right thing and be a nice guy. And people didn't really want the guy next door. They wanted that larger than life rock star who, maybe died at the age of 27, like so many did. (laughs) And uh, it just wasn't me. Now, I think it's really cool that you can be yourself and be accepted as an artist. And people do appreciate that as back in the day, they did not, they didn't, they didn't want a regular guy just, you know, hanging out with them. They wanted somebody that was untouchable or somebody that was uh, not, not real. And that may have played against me back in the eighties when I was really just, being myself, when I do an interview, I would just talk uh, and, and say the things that I felt and think, things that I thought. And now there's a fine line between that. I mean, you don't want to go preaching to people. You don't want to talk politics or religion or, or all that stuff. I mean, that's everybody's personal business. I do have a problem with the people that say celebrities should just entertain and not speak about politics uh, because I pay taxes and I vote and all that stuff. Just because I have a bigger audience. Does that mean I should shut up? No, I don't think so. I think that uh, we have an obligation to our country, to our fellow men, to our, our neighbors and friends that, to, to speak our opinions. And whenever anybody says entertainers should just shut up and entertain, I have a problem with that because, like I said, I pay a, I pay a ton of taxes and uh, I, I, I have a larger audience. I have maybe a thousand people that will listen to me as opposed to somebody else at their dinner table. They'll They'll speak their mind to six people at the dinner table. That's cool. But if I speak to thousands, oh, no, you can't do that. So I do have a problem with that. I do like to speak my mind. And I've been known to do that from time to time. Very rarely will I post something political or uh, something that that really uh, I feel like I've got to be heard. And I don't do it all the time. You know, maybe once a year or so, I'll say, okay, the gloves are off. This is how I feel. This is what I think. And take it or leave it. And you might lose some fans over that. God bless Ted Nugent, man. He's lost a few fans through the years because he's been so vocal. Uh, I'm not quite that vocal, but I do have a I do have a take, and I feel the right to voice my take. I have the right to rock, and I have the right to talk because I'm an American citizen. And I, like I said, I paid my taxes, I paid my dues, and I work hard, and uh, I, I vote, and I believe in uh, what this country was built upon. So. That's the right to rock, man. And that's all I'm going to say about politics. I did not make a political commentary there, as you no. notice. I just <laughs> expressed my right to make a political commentary. And, <laughs> and, that's, that right. and if more people did that, that would be great. <laughs> yeah, I get it, man. Yeah. George Clooney. No, never mind. I didn't say that. Yeah, <laughs> see, don't start. Don't, you start dropping – if you drop one name, then that just throws it all to the curve. I, won't see it, I, I will not see another George Clooney movie. Let's put it that way. There's a few people <laughs> I won't see another movie. There's there, the yeah. list is getting very short. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Yeah. Just walk away, people. Just walk away. Yep. <laughs> so, so I know that you were drawn to up there in Sioux, Sioux. Was it Sioux City? Is where you're Sioux at. Sioux Falls. Sioux Falls. Sioux Falls. It is you a city. Up there, but you were drawn up there because of that 
that pond, the, the, all that that deal. Yeah. But, you're, you, but yeah. you're staying there though. You like the area. I mean, that's what you you got up there and you you like where you're at. I know you said you, Nashville was a place you stayed and and other places you've been. Yeah, I think my shelf life is, you know, nine to ten years. I spent uh, <laughs> I spent ten years in Nashville, uh, ten years in Hollywood, ten years in Vegas. I've been in Sioux Falls for three years. We'll see what happens seven years from now. But man, I love it. Years. <laughs> I, I love it. Uh, it is, uh, you know, I, I, I've always been a small town guy. Those music music towns like Nashville, L.A., and uh, Vegas were great to me. And a lot of great friends, a lot of great memories. But uh, when I moved here, I actually had bought uh, 10 acres in the middle of nowhere in Nevada. And I, was, I bought uh, 10 acres of land up at the Sierra Nevada Mountains. I was building my cabin in the in the in the boondocks so to speak and that was where i was expecting to end up uh i ended up in a small town in sioux falls but man i'm five minutes from the airport i could be in your town in six hours or less i'm right at the crossroads of america new york and la are both equidistant from my airport uh, so it is it is an address i do love it here i love the winters i had no idea how much i was going to fall in love with the snow and the, the just the, the covering of white that we get here for six months at a time. Uh, I'm a desert guy. I grew up in uh, Phoenix, uh, Vegas, uh, and those are the, the rocks, the cactus. I love all that stuff, but Sioux Falls has been great to me. And uh, the treatment that my wife received for, for her breast cancer, she had seven surgeries. It was a year and a half of, of a hard-fought battle with wow. breast cancer. And the treatment she's received here was the best in the country, state-of-the-art. Um, and we believe that uh, the forces of creation put us here for that reason. Uh, she's in the right zip code. If you're going to get breast cancer, you want to be in Sioux Falls, man, because the treatment here was absolutely incredible. The people have been uh, really, really embraced me and, and what I'm doing, both with the Ron Keel Band and with the radio station, KVAC Radio, which is the biggest, boldest, baddest, loudest inter internet radio station in the business. We are doubling our numbers every month. Last month, we had 60,000 listener hours, wow. uh, and we are, uh, we're just crushing it in the ratings. And uh, you guys know internet radio uh, is uh, it's the wave of the future. It is the Netflix of rock radio, and the radio station is doing fantastic. So I, I'm still doing what I came here to do in both the band. Uh, we we rebranded re it, the Ron Keel Band. But it's the same guys, same mission, same great show, and the radio station as well, rebranded as KBAC, K-B-A-C-K dot rocks. Uh, I'm on the air live 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Central Time every day, weekdays, if I'm not on the road. And I just love that interaction with the fans, the listeners, the uh, the phone calls. I mean, you could call me, you can text me, you can email me, you can Facebook me. It is a, a absolutely interactive social radio experience that I do every day, three hours a day, very much like putting on a, a concert or a show. I'm building the playlist and I'm interacting with the fans and uh, I, I'm addicted to it. So I really enjoy that aspect of what I do. And uh, when it's time to hit the road, like I said, I'm five minutes away from the airport and I'll be in your town before you know it. I tell you what, you hey, seem right. to adapt well, you know, to in, any situation that you've been dealt with, you, you have a great way to adapt to it. Thank you. I appreciate that. Well, that's uh, that. I think the term for that is a survivor, and yeah, exactly. that's part of part of my success at this stage of the game is that I've survived uh, this long, and I've kept swinging. I'm a firm believer, and I use a lot of sports analogies in my coaching, in my band, in my business. You cannot hit it out of the park if you are not swinging. You don't swing the bat. You don't hit the ball. That's just simple logic. So I've just kept swinging for 40 years now, literally decades of that. We're going to celebrate the 35th anniversary of the Steeler album in September. And uh, I believe, man, you've got to be in the game. You've got to be swinging. You've got to be playing. The best way to, uh, to, to, to kick ass is to keep kicking ass. And uh, I don't know any other way to do it. So does that mean you and Ingve are going to go hang out together? <laughs> man, I don't think so. I don't think so. And I would, I would, man. I don't know. I mean that that's a that's a character thing, a personality thing. Uh, we had some good times. We had uh, co collaborated on an album which made heavy metal history. That Steeler album is one of the foundations of '80s metal. Uh, at one time, was the biggest selling independent heavy metal record of all time. Launched both of our careers, and 
but I don't know why he wouldn't want to at least say, hey, Ron, screw you. I mean, or something. Uh, I've reached out to him through the years, and he doesn't want anything to do with me. Uh, and that's cool. I mean, to each his own. I'll just uh, hang out with the people who actually want to hang out with me. Uh, I do appreciate the contribution uh, that we both made to, to rock and roll and, and to heavy metal history. And I think uh, I just, uh, I mean, I love reaching out to former bandmates, old friends from high school. I mean, who wouldn't want to say hey to an old buddy that was on the basketball team with you 40 years ago and say, hey, man, it was good times. I miss you. I hope you're doing well. There's not there's none of that with me and Bay, and uh, it's certainly not from from my end. I would I would uh, applaud him for following his vision, doing what he came to America to do, and uh, becoming one of the greatest guitar players that ever lived. In fact, when I found him in a, in a basement in Stockholm, I thought he was the best guitar player on the planet. That's why I brought him here, and uh, it hasn't changed. He's uh, an amazing talent. Cool. Awesome. Hey, Ron, go back to your to the radio station. So we've had some discussion on here about, you know, new bands trying to make it or old bands that are older bands that are putting out new music and just that avenue of being able to get new music on, um, you know, on radio or heard. So on your station, are you playing new stuff by old artists? Like, for example, Slaughter had a, you know, Mark Slaughter had a new album out last year. It was a great record. Um, there's been, you know, there's been multiple people. Four by Fate had a record out last year. But last year, the year before, great record. But we can't hear it on the radio. I mean, on the regular radio. Oh, so you can hear it on K back. Absolutely. Yeah, you hear yeah. What the people want and what I like, what we like. And I play stuff I don't like. It's a very diverse format. But I'm a firm believer in supporting great music, whether it's old, new, whether I've never heard of the artist before, or whether they're old friends like Mark Slaughter. And that is a great record. Halfway there. What a fantastic album. And fantastic. that album itself was one of the reasons I wanted to sign with EMP Label Group, the same label that uh, Mark is on, because it seemed like, what a great product. They're doing everything right. The record charted uh, well and, and was very successful. And uh, Mark is a friend of mine who I really respect. And that really was the uh, light bulb over the over my head that said, I need to look into uh, signing uh, my band to EMP Label Group. And yeah, we play that. I play uh, local bands, independent artists, and I do play, I love playing the new music from my favorite bands like Scorpions and Priest and uh, uh, Black Star Riders. Uh, gosh, oh. it, there's so many, so many great bands that uh, we but have. Not getting any, they're not getting any play on regular radio. I mean, well, on general radio, it's just ridiculous. It's just regular ridiculous. radio. Regular radio can kiss my ass, and we should yeah. all listen to KBAC. KBACK <laughs> dot rocks. I will be. Hear, I will be listening. <laughs> thank you. It's it's an acquired taste. You're going to hear stuff. That you don't like, that you may not have heard before, or whatever, uh, because it is so diverse. We're going to take you on a ride through rock history from the '60s to stuff that just came out today. Uh, I'll, I'll spring some live tracks on you, album cuts, uh, unplugged stuff. Every day I spin uh, an unplugged segment, and I also play vinyl on the on the radio. I, I pick out a vinyl album from uh, vintage vinyl from uh, history and I, I play a couple of cuts off the vinyl you hear snap crackle pop I love it is that. to me it's rock radio the way it was meant to be or at least the way i meant it to be it's fun it's reckless it's entertaining and there's nobody looking over my shoulder telling me what to do except my listeners and they're doubling every month people are telling their friends and uh, people are tuning in via the uh the live 365 free mobile app the tune in radio mobile app or online at kback.rocks it is on tune in Okay, cool. Yes, I'm it is. I do Absolutely. have it on my phone. So. Absolutely. K back. Awesome. K back, K -back. baby. I'll get <laughs> I got something new to listen to at work. There you go. There you go. There you go. Hey, that'll be awesome. Awesome. So, what's next? What's uh, So, the album comes out, may, might be touring. You go into Atlanta. You never no, have anything going, going to on Nashville. at all. Do you? Not Atlanta. Atlanta. Going to Nashville. Sorry, Nashville. going to Nashville. Um, I'm going to Nashville August 25th. Uh, yeah, I stay busy, man. You know, I don't know any other way to be at this stage of the game. And uh, I like to, uh, to to take it to the limit while I can. I'm still, you know, I, I've had four long, hard decades in this business. And time waits for no one. Uh, there's a shelf life to what I do and uh, how I can do it well and get out on stage and, and scream my guts out and perform on a level that I'm proud of. 
It's not going to be forever. I know that I'll be singing and playing until the day I die. You're going to find me on a bar stool in the middle of nowhere somewhere with a guitar in my hand, and I'm just going to die. I'm going to, that, that's, that's it, man. Uh, but in terms of really having a, a great band behind me, kicking ass on the road, on stage, big shows. Um, and last year we toured with Tesla. Uh, we've done some big headline dates. This year, just a couple of weeks ago, uh, here in Sioux Falls, headlining a, a major event for 15,000 people. And uh, next week, a week from today, I don't know when this podcast will uh, become public, but one week from the day that we're taping this, we'll be at Ha Harley Nice, which is uh, one of the biggest biker events in the year. We've done Sturgis a couple of years in a row, uh, been everywhere from Florida to uh, Texas to you know wherever they send us. I'm really proud of the fact that I'm still delivering a product, and it is a product uh, that I'm proud of, that I that I can go to bed at night going, man, that was kick-ass. I'm really proud of what I did, and I'm, I'm not uh, mailing it in. I'm not ashamed. I can listen to the live recordings to see the YouTube clips. Go, yeah, that's cool, as opposed to some of my contemporaries and my peers that are out there making a lot of money mailing it in and i'm not going to name names but it's it's almost very sad to see some of these artists that don't want to be there they don't like it all they can do is bitch about their monitor mix and they're standing there and with a drink in their hand and mailing it in and singing everything an octave lower and just bitching out the monitor guy and man i'm if i'm ever that guy i'm done i'm done i'm gonna take every gig every song like like it's my last and uh, enjoy the ride while i can Hey, speaking of kicking ass, I want to go back to the Atlanta Expo. Uh, when the, I don't know who the tribute band was, I don't even know where they came from, but uh, when you got up on stage with them, they did two or three songs with you, and one of them was The Right to Rock. Man, those guys, or those gals brought it. That's right. It was a uh, female Kiss tribute band called Fritz. Fritz. Yeah. And before the uh, before the gig, of course, that's part of the deal. You know, yeah, and you've promoted these Kiss Expos before. Part of the deal is I'm going to sing with the tribute band, whoever it is, whether it's a Kiss song or, or whatever. And they gave me free reign to choose my Kiss song of choice, which was Rock and Roll Hell off the Creatures of the Night album, which I covered on the uh, Mitch LaFon uh, Cancer Benefit tribute oh, CD. I, back. CD. I have that CD. I have that CD. Yeah, yeah man, awesome what a great CD. record. And <laughs> Rock and Roll Hell has always been – to me, one of my favorite Kiss songs, and I even did it in my acoustic show from time to time because it's it's pretty simple. I mean, dun, 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 dun. you do it with one hand, dun, 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 dun. and you, you know get the crowd going. And I did a medley of Rock and Roll Hell and Heaven and Hell by Black Sabbath. And uh, when Mitch LaFon approached me to do the Kiss tribute album, he gave me my choice of songs. I chose that one. And we had um, me on lead vocals, Eric Brittingham and Jeff Labar from Cinderella on guitar and bass, and uh, Troy Lucetta from Tesla on drums. What, what a great lineup of musicians. And uh, the track came out great. And I thought, if I'm going to do a Kiss Expo and, and get up with a band, if I could choose one track to do, that would be it. And of course, the Right to Rock works great. And I, I applaud those bands that, uh, especially Chris, that was a great gig in Atlanta late at night. It was very, very late. Uh, last last couple of songs of the night to be able to get up and do that with them and I thought it was a really solid performance. Those girls did a great job and the lead singer remembered all of the lyrics. I'm really proud of him too. <laughs> yeah, <he's laughs> hey Ron, I gotta, um, we've talked on this show a couple of times about um, you know in 10 years or 20 years will there, will there be any bands that have a 30 year career? I mean well we is that going to is that going to ever happen again? Or is and it is interesting? What's your take on it? I mean, you're you've been around a long time, so we, we've the had newer this discussion. bands that are around. Are the they bands going to be around become Aerosmith or uh, and the, yeah. the next Rolling Stones? No, I don't think so, man. You know, I mean, yeah. who am I to say? I'm just a rock and roll guy who's trying to uh, get through every day and have a good time and entertain people. Uh, so these philosophical questions about the future, I do feel that times have changed drastically since I was coming up in the business 30 years ago and they're only going to keep changing. I mean, that's part of the nature of, of our culture and uh, the business and music 
has always been a reflection of the culture, even from the time the first caveman pounded on a, a, a log with a rock. I mean, he's making music, all right? That's the statement of their culture. They're doing their tribal dance and they're chanting and they're pounding on a log with a rock, all right? That's the reflection of their culture. As we progress through time, other styles of music, whether it was the blues, uh, country music, rock and roll, Chuck Berry, on through the the 60s with the British invasion and the Beatles and the Stones and the Who, and then uh, the 70s, then metal in the 80s, the 90s. I mean, it's a reflection of our society and our culture. Technology has changed all of that. For better or for worse, I mean, the guitar, the electric guitar was a technological innovation, okay? It changed the world. I think it changed the world for the better. I'm not sure about the internet. There's so many cool things about the internet that we can enjoy this conversation via Skype, long distance. We can see each other. We can communicate. We can interact. I know what my granddaughter did today in uh, Minnesota because, uh, Michigan, sorry, she's in Michigan. I know what my <laughs> granddaughter did today. I saw my granddaughter learn how to skate today. How cool is that? Because of the internet. If it hadn't been for the internet, I wouldn't be able to see her take her first trip on roller skates. So it's cool in so many ways, but in a lot of ways, it's shortened our attention span to the point where nobody listens to an entire album anymore. But when are you going to put on an album, start a track one, listen to the whole thing, top to bottom? Very rarely. Uh, and the fact that uh, you can find your favorite artist you can go to their concert, whatever they, wherever Bon Jovi played last night, you can find it on YouTube, man. Why go? Why bother with parking and you know, paying 500 bucks for a ticket and all that when you could just see it on the internet? Um, the attention span is very, very short these days, and it's a reflection of our culture. Everybody's glued to their cell phones. We're all sitting around the dinner table. You can invite all your friends to dinner. Well, if, if we all four went to dinner tonight, we'd all be four glued to our phones. And every now and then we look up and make eye contact. Probably not, you know, but that's the nature of our culture. Who knows what it's going to be like in 10, 20, 30 years. You'll have it hardwired into your brain. You won't even need your cell phone. Just think about a song that'll play in your head. I don't know. I don't know, man, but. My head already does that. Yeah, yeah mine does me too. too. <laughs> me too. There will never be another Elvis. There'll never be another right. Beatles. There will never be another Aerosmith, like you mentioned, uh, bands that have that kind of longevity and you know it, everything's it's disposable now disposable. it sure is I man mean, these, these people are, these, these bands are coming out are disposable and i think that like i said i'm 50 i just turned 50 or 53 and we're but we're the, we're the people who still buy an album listen to it from song one till we get done you know, I'll read whatever liner notes if I got my if I have my bifocals on where I could read Absolutely, the CD. Man. <laughs> you know, and but the thing is, we still do that. Kids don't do that shit now. They don't. They don't they do just it. Buy, they buy a song. They like the song. Okay, we're done. Okay, now we're gonna go to the who's the next who's the next person. You know, it's it's and just, they won't even listen to the whole song. They will. No. Oh they'll, shit. They'll no, get they through the first chorus and then they'll go to the next song. Yeah. And they'll yeah. just Spotify or whatever. They won't even listen to a whole song, much less a whole album these days. And, uh, that is uh, that. That's the nature of the beast. It's the world we live in, and uh, I don't know, man. I'd like to uh, like to think that there's hope for the human race, but uh, <laughs> the technology has become a double-edged sword. As I mentioned, it's a wonderful tool, but right. everybody now, everybody's got you know a couple thousand fans. You can sell when when the Right to Rock came out in 1985. The Right to Rock, my debut major label album produced by Gene Simmons. We uh, we sold 90,000 albums the first week, right. all right? And we did not crack Billboard's top 200. Didn't happen. We're not on the charts with 90,000. Today. Today, 90,000. <laughs> today, <laughs> That's you almost 20, gold. <laughs> today, you sold 25,000 albums. Yeah. You're number one on the oh, charts. Yeah. 90, you would be number one, and you'd probably have a they give oh, yeah. you like, some special accolade for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, with 90,000 albums sold in one week, we did not crack the top 200. Today, you sold 25,000. You're number one. and But you're still, like Luke Carl said in the movie, Here I Go Again, you're still the number one broke guy. You know, the, the guy, <laughs> you figure, you know, you're going to make 100 grand off a record and uh, you're going to split it with the guys in the band, pay your production costs. And at the end of the day, you're going to make, wow, 20 grand. That's why, 
uh, the Guitar Center has these stupid commercials with these guys playing on the subway for tips. Like, hey, buy a guitar from Guitar Center. You too could play for tips. <laughs> Uh, I don't get it. Uh, I, have, I have higher aspirations than that. I still do, man. At this stage of the game, for me, the dream is still alive. Uh, I do believe there are opportunities out there. There's money to be made. I can make a living. I can uh, find ways, creative ways, whether it's writing a book, hosting a radio show, making albums, touring, uh, and whatever else to be able to make a living doing what I'm doing. This is not my hobby. Uh this is my way of life. This is my job. This is my avocation. This is what I chose to do when I was a very small child. And I still believe that there are opportunities out there for young musicians. There, you know, whether it's hard rock guys, I mean, you talk about hard rock bands. I don't know. I don't know what kind of coin Hailstorm is pulling down, for instance. I do know that guys like Ed Sheeran, who is a young songwriter, artist who has been hugely successful, multi platinum success. He's making big bucks and he's succeeding. He's succeeding in our business. So I applaud that people like that give the young generation hope that there is still a chance for success, but they're settling for, well, man, we could make a hundred bucks and we might have 50 people at our show. And that's a big deal to them. For me, that's, that's a colossal failure. Um, you got to aspire to more like, like we did back in the day, Steven Tyler said it best fake it until you make it. And you know, you got to be big time before people will think you're big time. And uh, you know, I, I'm glad that I was able to, enjoy some success in the eighties that has given me the, the momentum and the, the uh, inertia to continue my career at this stage of the game. And still kind of uh, there's people that will listen and people like yourselves that will want me on the podcast and say, hey, let's talk to Ron Keel as opposed to not giving a shit. You know, I, mean, I appreciate the opportunities as they come and whether it's uh, one person or a hundred thousand people, I'm going to continue to try and win fans over one fan at a time. And, uh, like I said earlier, you're going to lose a lot of fans along the way. There's people that that don't want what you do or don't like what you do. You just got to reach out and win somebody else over and have them put their fist in the air and sing along and buy what you do. Uh, one of my favorite uh, philosophies, if you will, is the fact that I've sold 3 million albums. You know what that means? That means there are billions of people who don't give a shit, who don't want what I do, who don't care. <laughs> I'm cool with the three million. I'm good with that. But you know that, that the fact is that there's billions of people who don't know who the hell I am and don't want to know. Well, like I said, well, that's we, our job. We're, our yeah. job is to figure out to to get you out to 35 other people. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. And you know that that that's what it takes: one listener, one fan, one friend at a time, and continue to build and grow and and uh, don't stop swinging, man. I, I'm just I'm I'm still in the game and. But the fact that you guys want me on the show is is a, a testament to that. Well, by gosh, there's a bunch of people our age that still love that music and will still keep buying and still listen from from the first track to the last track. We won't fucking stop unless we gotta go to the bathroom or something. You know, sometimes our, <laughs> our, our we don't have to get old as long as we used to. <laughs> I appreciate that, and I uh, can't wait it, to uh, can't wait to uh, spring the new album on you. Uh, really proud of this record, "Fight Like a Band" from the Ron Keel Band on EMP Label Group. Uh, it, uh, it, as far as I'm concerned, it is the best album I've ever done because it's the next album I've ever done. <laughs> there you go. Is it, um, you think is, we might hear something in Nashville from the record? Uh, it's quite possible. Yeah. I mean, uh, there you go. the release date's August 31st and the Nashville rock and pot expo is August 25th. I can guarantee you, I will have the, uh, the final mixes in hand. It'd be great to have a couple of promo CDs to uh, to turn some people yeah. onto the new music while I'm there. So we'll see Tom Hazart, who is the head of A&R at EMP, is going to be at the, the Rock and Pot Expo as well. He's oh, the cool. boss. He's, he's the head of A&R, director of operations for Dave Ellison's EMP label group. Yeah. And Tom Hazart's going to be there in Nashville with us. So uh, if he says it's cool, man, I'll I'll spring it on you. I, I, I shy yeah, away. We'll just go out to our car in a parking lot. We'll just listen to it on the radio. <laughs> damn right. we'll oh, you damn right. <laughs> Uh, I've shied away from doing the new songs in the show right. because these days, like we discussed, the oh, attention yeah, YouTube span, will be YouTube. Be I mean, YouTube. all of a sudden, yeah, they're going to hear us perform a song live for the first time that's on the new album, and they're going to form some kind of judgment, and maybe they're going to buy the record, maybe not. I don't know. I mean, it's just too risky to me. Uh, there, were, there was a time when we would pull out new songs off the the next album 
and uh, try them out in front of a live audience to see how it worked and to get tight and all that. I'm not doing it now. We are opening the show uh, with a song called Road Ready, which is a great heavy rocker, uh, a tailor made to be an opening song. But I figure by the end of the opening song, people will go, what was that? What did they play? I've never heard that before. And they won't know. Oh, that's a new song. It's not like, hey, we're going to play something off the new album for you now. Get your cell phones out so you can YouTube this stuff. Uh, so we're opening the show with that. And by the time uh, the song's over with, people don't have time to even, it's just a fast, furious rocker. And uh, I think uh, I think that's okay. But I can't wait to play some of these new songs live in the show. And maybe I'll, I'll bust one or two out at the performance at the Rock and Pod Expo in awesome. Nashville. Yeah. That'd be awesome. And we're looking forward to seeing you. So that'd yep. be cool. All right. So, Alan, you want to uh, I'll tell you what, Ron, give us all your. Uh, Everywhere we can social find you, media stuff. social media, just so, spill it out, dude. I'm a firm believer in the conventional website, and I find this one of the biggest mistakes with uh, new bands. When I'm trying to help promote their their music, and they're sending me music, I get piled up. Hey, play me on the radio. When I get piled up with new music, some of it's really good. And I said, what's your website? Well, we don't have a website. We have a Facebook page. <laughs> you know, that to me is the kiss of death. That's business 101. Uh, you've got to have a conventional website. Mine, of course, is ronkeel.com. And people, every day, the messages pile up. Hey, man, where can I find your book? Uh, where, hey, where are you playing at? You know, they're asking me questions where they can just go to ronkeel.com. Uh, I can also tell you that this is only eight years ago when we signed with Frontiers Records for the Keel album, Streets of Rock and Roll, the big Keel reunion album. Uh, Frontiers Records, of course, you know Frontiers. They have a lot of great artists and uh, major acts. They're a big player in the business. It was mandated by the label that you had to put your MySpace page address on the back of the CD cover. MySpace, man. You know, that was part of the deal. The MySpace on the Keel 2010 8x10, and that's only eight years ago. It's not that long. It says MySpace.com slash Keel Band on the, on the friggin' photo. Wow. Uh, we all see what happened to MySpace. It's going to happen to Facebook. Twitter, Twitter's cool. I love it. Twitter, at Ron Keel. Facebook, at Ron <laughs> Keel. Very simple. Ron Keel, everywhere you go. Right. But I'm a firm believer in having a conventional website. You want to know where I'm at. You want to uh, watch videos, listen to music, uh, get in touch with me by email. You want my chili recipe? Ron Keel chili? <laughs> I, uh, you, ain't, you ain't lived to eat some Ron Keel chili. My chili recipe is on my oh, yeah. website, ronkeel.com. <laughs> That's the only place you need to go. And, of course, there at ronkeel.com, there's links to all the Instagrams and the Facebooks and the uh, Twitters and all that stuff. It's all right there, ronkeel.com. Right. Thanks for letting me plug that. Awesome. That's awesome, man. All hey, right. thanks a lot, man. We really appreciate your time. And it's the weekend. I, I might make time. some chili, too. I might make some chili yeah. this weekend. <laughs> Highly recommended, man. That's a great recipe. Rockheel.com. RK Chili. It's on there. And thank you guys for having me on the podcast. Best of luck in what you're doing. And thanks for keeping the music alive. I'll see you in Nashville. Yeah. Hang Absolutely, around for just a man. second. Hang around for just a second. And, Alan, you want to take us out of here? I sure will. Visit us on 80sofrock.com, and there you can find all of our social media, such as Facebook, Instagram, <laughs> Twitter, <laughs> Stitcher Radio, Spotify, all of that good stuff. And until next time, peace out, folks. Thanks for listening to the Ages of Rock podcast. If you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and most importantly, tell all your friends. Remember, you're never too old to rock. Until the next episode, peace out, folks.